arriving here at the Chassis Unlimited headquarters in Tracy, California. And we're going to park up here, go inside and meet with Nate, who's going to actually give me a tour of the facility. And I do have permission to record that tour. And so I will include that uh, next in this video. So let's head inside and meet with Nate and do a tour of the facility. Where it all happens, huh? Where it all happens. Wow, you got everything. We'll start off, I'll show you where it all starts. Yeah. So after it leaves the CAD and um, our engineer nests it all together, this is what our nest looks like for all of our bumpers. And we'll build most of these bumpers out based upon the model of the bumper and classifications of it. Yeah. Uh, and we do like mine. So once it goes into this computer here, she's not running, yeah. but it goes into our laser cutter here and our laser cutter will begin cutting the process. I think they're loaded up right now for the next batch of S. Yeah, looks like it. So after it gets laser cutted, our guys over here in the back will go ahead and start pulling the pieces out of the sheets and we'll put them on these pallets over here in groups so that way they can be brought over to our welding department and begin the process of manufacturing. So these guys right now are loading sheet on. Yeah. Get ready for the next batch. Right. Yep. So after they get palletized here, we'll bring them over here and we'll take you into where we do our form and fitting. Okay. Yeah. So we'll computerize, huh? Well computerized. This part for the most part under this is but there's still some manual labor included in it. Oh yeah I'm sure. So once once we have our buffers all in you can see over here we this is our these are all the orders we have currently right now that are waiting to be queued up. This is where we're at today with the amount of orders that we have. So these guys will go through. And it starts over here where we'll stamp the uh, SKU numbers on it. Yeah. So that way when you look inside your bumper, you'll have a part number. So if you ever need to replace something, you can get us that part number. Yep. And then once they get stamped, look them over here. These guys will form and fit it, bend it to where it needs to be. And you'll see these are all the bent pieces, how they're formed. Yeah. From there it comes over to our our fitment team. Yep. These guys will weld them together, make sure it's lined up nice and neat, make sure it looks sharp. So it's all hand welded? It's all hand welded. It is 100% hand welded. So yeah. it always starts with this right here. If something doesn't look right and we're forming fitting it, it does not get moved forward to welding. It has to be spot on before it goes over to our welding department. Yeah. It comes over here to our welding booth. So these guys are our welding team. These guys are welded up. Yep. Once it's done, it's gone through welding, they've got the approval for it, they've cleaned up the slag on it. It then gets brought over here. These, This is our um, batch of bumpers waiting to be sandblasted. Yep. Once it's done, once we've got them in order at that point, now, we, or, now we're processing them by order received. So then it goes into sandblasting. On average here, we're looking at 30 to 40 orders a day. And we'll come back over here, let's check out the uh, powder coating. Oh area. yeah, yeah. So everything is on site? Everything is the whole on process. site. The whole entire process. The only thing that does not get done here is if you look at the front bumpers and the rear bumpers, if you look at yours, you've got the D-rings. Yeah. We don't manufacture those. Okay. But those are manufactured here in Tracy, California. So once it leaves our sandblast department, this is where it goes in the queue for powder coating. Uh, all right, it'll go into the queue for the on rack. We'll have one guy laying the powder coating on. Yeah. One guy will be over here getting them ready to hang or pull them out of the oven. Yeah. So once it goes into the oven, it gets pre-baked. After it's pre-baked, it comes back over here, we'll coat it, and then it goes back in the oven, and these things are baked at about 650 degrees. Once it's done being baked, it comes over here for about an hour, hour and a half, a chance for it to cool down. Our shipping guys will pull them off the rack, we'll set them over here in our uh, shipping area, and then these guys start rocking and rolling, we'll packaging them up, get them shipped out the door, and yeah. we'll sit over here. Stack there. Right, yeah, I see that. And as of right now, I think our allotment for bumpers that we ship out of time from UPS is about 25 bumpers a day. Yeah, I imagine the front bumpers are a little easier to ship. A little bit easier to ship because they're packaged up um, in, the UPS, in the UPS box yeah. and they're modular. Whereas our full, full bumpers that are one piece, they got to be shipped out on a pallet. So depending on the customer, yeah. whether or not they've got one bumper or two bumpers, if they're doing a front and rear, we'll ship out the front and rear together. Yeah. The rear will be on the pallet, the front bumper will be in a, in a UPS box or a shipping box, yeah. cradle ready to go. At this point, the conversation turned to fitting my bumper into the truck. Will it fit? Do we need to remove it from the pallet? Let's find out. This is how we ship out our swing outs. 
so, so yeah I see now why the pallets are so big yep. we'll wrap them up into uh, cardboard protect them as much as we can we hand build our pallets so that way you know we can ensure that they're gonna be quality is it gonna fit <laughs> It's going to be tight. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get a tape measure. measure and see. Yeah. It's the same size as the pallet. There's maybe a half inch clearance on either side. My bed is uh, 76 inches. The pallet is 84. If we'll I have to, I'll, try, you know, I'll drive with the tailgate down and tailgate strap it down, in. Strap it, wrap it. That might be the best choice. Well, I, I did put an ag mat in the back, so I have a rubber, three-quarter inch rubber mat in the bottom of the bed. Okay, that's good. So that, that So okay. if I do take a it off... A lot of people don't have that. Uh, what did you say you have? Uh, 76. 76? So even with the bumper, you're looking at about 78 inches. So two inches of overhang, otherwise with the pallet it's 79. I, I may just have to drive with the tailgate down. I think you probably will. Um, I mean yeah. it's pretty low so I can get the top camper door down. I have two ratchet straps. Okay, so you should be able to anchor it down and hold it in place. As long as your back hatch closes, it should be okay. It does, yeah. It, it yeah. latches separately. Okay, so if you want, we can go ahead and load this up on the pallet. It's and probably we'll easier for you yeah. guys. Yeah, I'm just going to have the tailgate down and I'll tie down the, you know, it's not going to move anyway. Either but way, it's still going to be a lot easier for you this way than it would for us to ship it out to you. It's going to turn into a nightmare. I'm trying to unload this thing without the pallet. Uh, 315, 325 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, unloading it's going to be the trick, but I'll figure that out once I get back. I have a tractor with a bucket and I can put ropes and chains on it. and So, you know. Very, very careful. I hate for you to for anything to drop. What I might do is just like pull it out partially and then hand lift it out of there. Hand lift it out or see if you have like a friend, like a neighbor or something that's, that you can possibly reach out to and see if with they a, could help kind of balance a, it. Or somebody with a fork lift ideally. Yeah. <laughs> so looks like I can just get down yeah, side of him. Just go kind of back up, back up and just back it in here. Um, you can back up right here, like he is where he's at. Something. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's locked actually. Watch out for the door. Yeah. I can't. Hold on. I'm gonna try the door. How much space do I have? You got. Yeah, that's good. Yep. I think that'll do it because it's. Inside. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. Well, loading it was easy. Hopefully, you got a tractor or something to help help you offload. Or a... I have a tractor and some helpers. Well, so I'll hopefully, a couple good friends in the case of here. They'll be uh, better friends by the time we're finished, I think. <laughs> or or not. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Appreciate Nate, thank you, sir. Thank you. Very welcome, Stephen. Thank you appreciate for the your business. Appreciate you. I'll, uh, I'll ping you when the video is done. Sounds good, Stephen. Look forward to seeing it. Yeah. Okay, okay, guys. Thank you. Okay, so we got the bumper back home safely enough. And so we have this pallet, which is 84 inches long, sitting in the back of the pickup bed. So what I'm going to try and do is use these forks, which are 42 inches best case. So clearly not long enough to go in from the end of the pallet. So I'm going to attempt to go in from the side. And uh, in order to accomplish that, I'm going to try and pull this out and rest it between the two trucks. So I can come in from the side with the tractor and go sort of widthways underneath the pallet rather than into the end of the pallet here. So I just need to allow enough space to get the tractor between the two trucks. So gonna go in here yeah. I'm just gonna clamp that down I'm just gonna put him in here and right. 
Basically, flip tailgate down. So my plan is to use using a rope around here, using a rope is to pull this out a couple of feet. Then I'll readjust the rope and we'll pull it out further. So I can get the tractor between the two trucks. That's the plan. Okay, that was all very involved, and so we spared you the to and fro trying to get everything lined up. But we did get it lined up, as you can see. So now it remains to lift this pallet with a bumper on it above the two tailgates and then extricate both of the trucks from under the pallet and then drop the pallet hopefully not literally, on the floor with the tractor. Now, I can't explain at this point why I just didn't back up the tractor and, you know, place the pallet on the floor, but I did not do that. I decided to move the trucks first. The hydraulics are pretty decent on the tractor and so it held it in place pretty well. So yeah, I, I really can't explain that. So all that remains is to move the pallet and place it, not drop it, on the floor, ready for the next step, which will be the installation.
Well, as you can see there, the actual install went pretty smoothly and we're just tightening up some bolts and have some wiring to do. Now, we didn't actually have any instructions when we did this. It seemed pretty obvious, but we will soon find out that we'd missed a couple of things. Next up, a couple of things that we missed and a couple of things that we discovered. So clearancing the hitch connector isn't mentioned in the printed documentation from Chassis Unlimited, but it does seem to be fairly well known. And the problem is that the tab on the top of the connector does not clear with the swing on the left hand side of the truck. So that to that end, you do have to remove the tab. We used a Dremel cutoff wheel and then we used this abrasive cylinder attachment to the Dremel to finish that off. And it actually does a pretty nice job. As you can see, here it is installed onto the bumper. And just to prove that it clears, here's another shot of that. It's a pretty tight fit, but it does clear it and it does the job. The license plate lights were not problematic per se. But I did want to mention a couple of things that we did. So I did manage to find this uh, harness connector so you can avoid cutting any of the wiring in the truck. And we also used these Vargo connectors, which are quick release spring connectors. I did use some dielectric grease in there. I'm not sure if they're meant to be used outdoors and we'll report back on how they work. But um, the reason for the Vargos is that you do need to remove the lights to remove the license plate. So having a quick release on those wires allows you to do that without making a cut into the cables. And the most time consuming thing for us, the thing that we missed, is that these captive nuts are actually welded on to the original uh, bumper mount need to be cut off or drilled out. And we did not discover that until after we had the bumper mounted on the truck. So we had to resort to the Dremel tool to cut them off. And that actually worked out pretty well, but it took me a bunch of time and effort to figure that out. So here it is, the bottom one has been ground down, the top one has been cut off and yet to be ground. And these are the four offending captive nuts that have now been cut out of the original bumper mount. And here's the final result. So there are four bolts like this now at each side of the bumper. And note that this is not an issue for all the Ram trucks, but it is an issue for the power wagon. And uh, a shot here of the Dremel with a cutoff tool that we used. And again, a link for this and all the Dremel stuff will be in the description below. If you enjoyed our video, we'd really appreciate a like, it makes a big difference. 
And if you want to see more of our videos, why not subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.